lifelong um, fascination with, uh, with paleontology. But where did it begin? And for most of us, if you're tuning in and you're into fossils or you're sort of into them, you know, how did you get into it? Well, I got to share with you. It was my grandfather. Uh, my grandfather was a mechanic, a machinist, excuse me, a machinist in a small coal mining town in central Pennsylvania. And we would go up and visit him every, you know, like periodically, the kids, you know, and he one day said, hey, John, I want to show you something cool. So we went downstairs in his house and uh, he had a coffee can. And he opened up the coffee can, which was metal coffee cans at the time, right? And in it were fossils. I had never seen anything like it. They were beautiful fern fossils. They were just, of course, this is Pennsylvania, and it's, you know, the Pens uh, it would be in the, the cold measures of Pennsylvania. And, and obviously, I would learn later that this is, these are typical fossils found in that area. But when I was seven or eight years old, I got hooked. And right behind me, I've got, you know, thousands and thousands of specimens that I've collected and my family's collected, my wife's collected over the years. Okay, so here we go. <clears throat> I'm going to be uh, launching a PowerPoint here uh, in a second. And we're going to start having a little introduction. I hope everybody can see that. And here we go. You shared the screen. I'm not seeing it yet. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait a minute. No worries. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me just get back to. I'm learning. Uh, that would be helpful to share the screen. Let me do this, and then down here, share screen, right here. How's that? Four. I. <clears throat> My, uh, I'm getting better, guys. I'm getting better. All right, here we go. How's that? Perfect. So this one is is how are fossils formed, but it's it's a more of a general what are fossils. But let's start with a story. <clears throat> this is Nathan Parker. At the time, he was ten years old. Okay. Nathan and his family had come down to uh, do some fossil collecting um, along the shoreline. And he was screening, uh, like with window screen, standing in the water, it was like real warm, standing in the water and he was screening uh, the gravels right there at the water's edge. And he pulls up this amazing, well, I knew it was a tooth. Well, a colleague of mine, the guy in the picture there, Dr. Robert Weems would identify it uh, as a metacytherium, metathytherium. This is an extinct type of manatee or dugon. It was the only second one ever found in 200 years. Nathan's manatee tooth is about 12 million years old. Okay, now 12 million years is, is really hard for us to figure out what it, uh, what that might look like because it's such a big number. So um, let's take a look at what 1 million would look like. Okay. If we could think of one grain of salt as one year, a good comparison would be two level tablespoons of salt for each grain meaning one year. And only two teeth have been found like Nathan's in a hundred years. So the first thing that I think that we need to understand about fossils is they are incredibly rare. I know that when you go to gift shops and natural uh, settings and parks and things like that, and, you know, uh, national national parks and state parks. Sometimes in the gift shops, they'll sell fossils and they'll have a whole bin full of them. And it's like, whoa, these things are all over the place. No, fossils are incredibly rare. The chances of a of a animal or a plant lasting millions of years is real, real rare. And you know, whole plants. 
you know, like a fossil of a whole plant, which I'll show you some stuff later. And whole animals are just unbelievably rare. So it's some people say that it's not one in a million that uh, living organisms becomes a fossil. It's one in a billion, a thousand million. It's even, you know, bigger. So there it is. There's Nathan's tooth, okay? Fossils are clear evidence that, that an organism lived, okay? You got a fossil, it's proof. And here are some examples, right? Of shark's teeth and you have that large um, skull of, of an Appalachiasaurus, which is actually, this is not in the Stratford collection, which it was, but it is uh, down in, uh, in Martinsville at the Museum of Natural History for Virginia Museum of Natural History that I work with those guys. So more than 99% of all living things are extinct, okay? Right away, almost ever, or maybe they figure like 5 billion different types of living things and 99% or more, 99.9 .9, are gone forever. And we only have a tiny, tiny, tiny little uh, evidence of, of fossils that are from the past. So for a fossil to form, okay, the body must not be eaten or destroyed uh, by erosion or any other natural forces and last for thousands, if not millions of years. So I hope you're getting the idea that any fossil is rare. The fossil tooth you pick up on at shark uh, along the Stratford beach, or maybe uh, a fossil you picked up on a vacation trip. Just think how rare that is. Incredible. So what fossilizes? Well, hard body parts, bones, teeth, things like that are, are most often preserved. It's likely most fossils will never be found, right? The most fossils will never be found before they are destroyed by erosion or other natural forces. So there, let's talk about the different types of fossils. Okay, body fossils. All right, I, I'm gonna hold up this. I hope you can see that. This is the lower left jaw of a Miocene long-legged pig called a taper. Excuse me, a peccary. Excuse me, peccary. This is a peccary jaw, and it's from Virginia. No, it's not from Stratford, but we could find something, and we do have peccary teeth and things. So body fossils okay, are the actual fossil, uh, fossilized remains of what the body looked like. And they range in shape from tiny little one cell dinoflagellates like that little uh, guy on the little picture on your left there and large body fossils like the baleen whale. Now, bones, shells and teeth, as you probably know, are also fossilized. This is a Torito, which is a collection of worms, but it too is a body fossil. So it retains the shape of the body. Well, actually, in this case, it's the uh, um, exterior uh, case uh, casing that the uh, animal lived in, but this would be considered like a shell of body fossils. So we have body fossils, we got shells, teeth, we have teeth, okay? Now, the teeth that you see in that co collection on the screen are typical teeth found at Stratford. This, though, is a mastodon tooth. So this is a body fossil. It's called a body fossil, okay? Now, a mold is the impression of that of something that is surrounded by muds and they leaves the impression sort of like if you took your finger or like your thumb and you pressed it into clay and you could see the ridges of your um of your um, finger in it you could see the 
you could see the uh, impression of the fingerprint. Well, that, you can see how big that thing is. That's the impression. That's just the impression or the mold of a large cypress tree at Stratford Hall. And I brought another one in. This is, this is an example of another type of mold where it is not the body, but the actual impression of a branch. And this is about 110 million years old and it's from Stafford County. This is a branch. Now, the next type of body fossil is called a cast. And you find these at Stratford and you find them, uh, you perhaps have seen them around. This is where you have the mold is actually filled with other muds and takes the shape pretty much of the inside of the animal. Now, this is a pectin or a scallop. This is the mold, excuse me, the cast of a large um, clam. It's got a crazy name. It's Kukulea giganta. Now we have another whole branch of, of fossils or trace fossils. And trace fossils are sometimes called ichnofossils, show actual biological activity. And, and uh, we're very excited at Stratford because we have been privileged to find um, a number of different trace fossils of uh, ice age animals. And it just, we are, I think we have as many as 40 different types now. The picture of the bear print, that's an Arctotus um, uh, prince, uh, princess up there in the, uh, that's the paw print of a bear that uh, the people that were uh, renovating the uh, renovated in uh, enslaved quarters at Stratford just simply picked that rock up and put it in the wall, not knowing that it would be a uh, the paw print of an extinct ice age bear, Arctotus. Anyway, um, John, we had a question. Yes. Okay, so Leslie asks, is it possible to find a skin sample of an extinct animal? Yes, they're rare. I mean, fossils are rare. These are incredibly rare, but uh, there are skin, um, like for instance, I know there are dinosaurian remains that have skin impressions. And uh, there are of um, the skins of frozen ice age animals from the Arctic and across from Siberia. Those are, believe it or not, um, are more common than you would think. So the skin of, let's say, something less than maybe a million years old, pretty prob probably, it's good to have them. They, they can be found, um, but you got to have the right circumstances. You know, the Arctic freeze. It's, so, um, but uh, dinosaurian fossils have been found. Um, some amazing ones are coming out of Belgium uh, that show uh, the skin patterns of uh, dinosaurs. Yes. Cool. Thank you. All right. Moving on. Okay. So these are trace fossils. Okay. By the way, the uh, picture uh, underneath the Arctotus or the bear, the, those are um, not as old. Those are about 70 to 80,000 year old uh, alligator prints from Stratford Hall. Now, this is cool. Sometimes only an impression of an original animal or plant is left. Just, just these are carbonized. So this is this is not a body. This is a fossil. Uh, it doesn't hold the body shape. This is not the uh, uh, shell remains or, or the cast or mold. This is like if you press, that is the body, that is the imprint of a 110 million year old plant that lived along a creek or a stream uh, in Stafford County um, 110 million years ago. And, and this is another type called carbonized fossils. Okay. So we got, got another question. Go. <laughs> okay. Leslie says, have you found one? Oh, uh, Leslie is Chase and McKenna. Yeah. Have I found what? I think answer that because I wasn't sure if this just popped up on my chat. Got it. So have you found a skin or oh. Chase and McKenna? 
Skin or one of these amazing imprints? Skin sample. Skin sample. Chase and McKenna. I tell you what, if I ever found a skin sample, I would be running around the neighborhood. I, I just, uh, <laughs> no, I have never found one. You have, I mean, I again, I, I want to make sure everybody's hip to that idea how rare any fossil is. Any fossil. Okay. And to find the skin imprint or of the, of, let's say a dinosaur or something like that. You know what the, you can find? Actually, um, I have found, <laughs> ready? I have found on the bottom of the foot of a dinosaur, I have found dinosaur tracks that show the imprint of the skin on the bottom of its foot. Oh, that, Whoa. Yeah. Okay. There you I Yes, I have. Well, that's pretty cool. It is cool. All right. Okay. All right, so, Bach money. Sorry. <laughs> moving on here. Okay. All right. One of the things I wanted to kind of guess the questions that people might have is, can anything fossilize? Can anything fossilize? Well, many plants and animals do not become fossils because they decompose, right? Or are eaten before they can be fossilized. So the picture showing the leaf that is degrading there on the right uh, on your screen uh, is just an example of the fact, again, uh, that boy, it's, it's, it's very, very rare. And, uh, but can anything fossilize? Any organic material could fossilize under the right circumstances. How, how old do you have to be to be a fossil? <laughs> and I don't want to hear any jokes about me, okay? I mean, I just, uh, but how old do you have to be to be a fossil? Well, I checked uh, some references and some other people that I know, and they figure, well, it's about 10,000 years, okay? And we're not talking um, necessarily mummified, but though mummification is a form of fossilization. Um, the Ice Age animals that I talked about earlier um, from the Arctic uh, are in effect mummified, frozen um, in, in effect. Um, now the oldest fossils, oldest fossils on earth are about 4 billion years old. So think of a thousand, 2000 tablespoons of salt. That's 1 billion, 2000 tablespoons of salt. That's one billion. So four times that. This is phenomenal. Uh, so there are there is evidence that has been found now of the earliest forms of life here on this planet. Can humans become fossils? Yeah, we're mammals, okay? Um, and mammals have bones. We get bones, we get teeth, and all of those can turn into fossils. So and perhaps you know about uh, some of the early uh, uh, hominids fossils that have, uh, have been found throughout the world, uh, primarily Africa and in Southeast Asia uh, that are uh, many millions of years old. So yep, humans can become fossils. Fossils are really cool. Most are very old and each one is a tiny, tiny, tiny part of the record of life that has been on this planet. Again, 99 point something percent of all the life is gone. And of that, only a very small amount has the preservation has, has been preserved for us to study. So again, fossils are very rare. So if you're, if you're into wanting to um, explore uh, at Stratford, we have a public access beach that is available and you can pick up house tour tickets or you can pick up grounds passes at the visitor center. And you can see the times are uh, Wednesday through Sunday, 9.30 to 5 p.m. Um, the next program that I'm gonna be doing is kind of cool. Um, it's on April 10th. And in this one, I'm gonna be asking for people to send me photographs of fossils and where you found them, if, you, if possible. You know, I took this picture in Arizona of the, this, you know, or we were in Minnesota, blah, 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 or something like that. And I picked this up, uh, send me a picture. And then on April 10th, it's gonna be you and me figuring out how old this fossil is. And I'll do, I'll do the best I can to explain 
uh, you tell me where you found it. I'll do the best I can to research it after, I, but get these pictures to me by April 1st, if possible. Uh, so, and where, how do you do that? Well, you can send it to that, Jay Bachman at stratfordhall.org. And that takes care of the PowerPoint. So stay curious, see you soon. Now we can open it up for a discussion, some questions. All right, I'm gonna stop the share. Okay. Got it. All, All right. right. I'm ready. Well, that was awesome. So I'm trying to figure out how I can become a fossil one day. I gotta, I gotta maybe mummify myself. I couldn't mummify myself, myself, but we'll I'll have my up. son do it for me or something. We'll look up cryogenics or something like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, actually, my best friend growing up, um, the the house that she lived in, it was in Berkeley, you know, so it was a bunch of these like sort of crazed, like hippie right. scientist people. And right. one of the people in the house is the one that froze the dog, Miles, that brought him back to life again and was one of the sort of big founders of cryogenics. And that whole family is frozen. So they're waiting to be mummies or not mummies, <laughs> fossils. Maybe, maybe waiting for, I Okay, well, everybody's got to have something. <laughs> On that note, <laughs> okay. okay, Talbot. Hey, Talbot. Talbot's one of our wonderful board members. Talbot asks, how did you find the bear print in the wall? Oh. Excellent question, Talbot. Actually, actually I didn't find it. Hmm. Oh. Okay. Dr. Robert. <laughs> <laughs> but I could say that. No, Dr. Robert Williams, um, this guy that I drive everybody nuts with. I say, hey, you know, Rob Williams. He and I, but he's amazing. He's amazing. Anyway, he came to Stratford and we were studying the Bacon's Castle formation, which is that ironstone rock that makes up predominantly the entire building. If you remember, the, the building is made of this reddish orange blocks and stuff, rocks. Well, he said, you know, there may be, let me take a look at the walls. He did. Not only did he find the bear print, but I've also we've also identified mouse tracks. Okay, <laughs> which <laughs> I may not be as in, uh, as as dramatic as uh, as bear prints, but um, the mouse prints and there's also salamander tracks have been found. Cool. Uh, just tiny little. Now how? Now again, he is an ethnologist, and. Uh, into tracks he's i love it i love it and we've been finding lots of other things in, in the walls lately that'll be a different episode, oh, yeah, a different episode. i know that's something cool. yeah no i feel like you know anyone that comes to stratford needs to take a slow walk around the house and the quarters and look at the walls and see what kind of markings you find in there okay great we're getting a lot of questions here so chase and mckenna ask uh, via leslie can you make a print of a plant in mud and have it hardened to make a fossil sure yeah yeah now I okay I'm I know there are different types of clay that you can buy at uh, craft stores and things like that that hardening that you know that uh, people that work in pottery and things like that yes oh yeah I mean you can make your own I mean but you don't have to go spend a lot of money on it you can just get some uh, you could actually make I suppose if you could have access to some form of clay. Um, it's naturally occurring. You need to locate some clay or buy some and then bake it. Yeah, sure. You could take leaves. In fact, people do, have, do that all the time to, you know, artistically, they take leaves and, and uh, various forms of vegetation and stick it in the clay. And uh, now they can either let it naturally dry in the sun, which is good, uh, or um, you can you know read the directions and <laughs> bake it <laughs> what a cool idea that's a that was a, a great question yeah. okay. awesome jared asks to my knowledge coal are the fossilized remains of the first trees to evolve hardwood is this true and if so does it mean that the natural chunk coal is some of the oldest and most abundant fossils on earth yes period excellent question jared that's wonderful jared perfect yeah it is uh it is squeezed smushed plants uh that have been stacked up now to many hundreds of feet as you may or may not know it's just uh specifically during the two periods that that on earth mississippian and the pennsylvanian these huge blocks of time that were the conditions were just right for that 
Mm. And think about, you know, even just the the phrase fossil fuels, you know, just sort of thinking about what that actually means is really yeah, yeah. And interesting. Natural, natural gas, you know, and one of the things that uh, that Virginia has uh, offshore, there's a there's a huge deposit in the Taylorsville Basin off in the uh, um, in the Chesapeake Bay of of gas uh, that is literally the byproduct of the decomposition of, of both marine and, and terrestrial plants. So cool. Any other questions? I know some of you requested a shark episode. That'll be coming, I think, this summer sometime. Yeah. Is that when we're doing that? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to be doing, um, uh, I'm going to be working with some guys that, um, and pulling together some information about the sharks uh, species that are found at Stratford. So that when you, if you do come, you know, we can say, well, these are the types of uh, fossils that you can find there. But again, Fossil, you know, people come to uh, look at the collection that we've got here at, uh, behind me and stuff, and they say, well, the most obvious question is, how did you collect all the, where, <laughs> where do you go, you know, to find all those things? Well, you know, you, I'm going to plug Roadside uh, Guide to Virginia Fossils and uh, there are a number of publications that are out there on fossil collecting in the Atlantic. You have to do a little research, but it's a wonderful hobby. I mean, you can just pack pack everybody up, get some snacks, hit the hit the road, and um, it's pretty quiet. It's pretty safe, you know. Yeah, especially with this pandemic, it's a wonderful way to socially distance. I mean, you can exactly just and... don't mistakenly bite into a fossil and not your bagel. That's <laughs> might hurt your teeth a little bit. You, I just remember, if you do get psyched up about, you do a little research, send me a question. I'll send you some information about where you can go in your locality. But, there you go. So. Excellent, excellent. All right, another question here from Chase and McKenna. So when people make power with coal, they are burning a fossil? Yes. Yeah, yep. And they're releasing the energy through heating it and burning it, right? That is there, sure. That's, they're burning a fossil. They're burning an ancient tree or they're burning an ancient uh, plant that lived along a stream bed or in the swamp. So fascinating. <laughs> they say, no, yes. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I'm loving the passion that's coming out of these two people no, watching this. No, I, it, <laughs> that's the thing about fossil collecting. Not, it's not everybody's cup of tea. You know, yeah. if I could go say, hey, I'm into fossil collecting and paleontology, and I get these blank stares like, <laughs> that's nice. You know, but, but for people who are intrigued about the about life, you know, all you have to do is kind of go outside and think of it. I was out this morning, just kind of, you know, checking out the morning and I was thinking about this program and I'm thinking, I'm looking at the trees in my yard and the thousands and thousands and thousands of leaves on those trees, none of which will be fossilized. Mm -hmm. All right. the animals that live in the ground, slithering around in the woods, running <laughs> around the woods, gone right what we have so again i don't mean to keep hammering on this but when you see a fossil or you go to a museum and you see this giant skeleton that's unbelievably rare okay mm -hmm. real real rare now some places okay have lots of fossils stratford hall's lucky okay mm -hmm. we we're have, very lucky we have a record of a slice of time that is that has managed under the right circumstances to retain fossils mm -hmm. and for us to study but how many stratford halls are there this is only one of maybe five places like it in the world that that have this record we're so lucky to i mean you know yeah. thank yeah, it is. yeah, thank you for always, you know, bringing that up. It's just such an amazing part of the site. Uh, Catherine asks, have you ever found a raptor fossil? Um, no, we, uh, I have never found out the raptors that are, you know, that uh, people are most associated with are the ones like the Jurassic Park raptors and things like that. The, uh, the raptors, though, uh, lived in the Fredericksburg area and 
we're pretty sure, me and Wames, Dr. Weems, uh, are pretty sure that we will eventually find the footprints of one, okay? Um, uh, so far, no, can't, can't say I have. We should see if um, at some point in the next year, oh, if he wants to hop on here and co-host with you one time, that'll be fun. Yeah. He's such a, you know, resource of knowledge. Any other questions? Anything at all? So what's behind you there? Is there a turnaround and grab? Okay, your house is on fire. Which fossil do you grab? All right. Or is it too big to grab? No, no, no. <laughs> Wait right there. Uh-oh. Okay, now I'm excited. <laughs> I love asking people that question about whatever it is, archaeologists or people that just collect art or whomever. Oh. Well, you won't be able to see it. It's a piece of a sidewalk, John. It's, it's part of my <laughs> walkway. On this, which I have, I know you, I'm going to have to, what I'll do is I will indicate with a pen. Or the, uh -oh. or the only known... No, I know. I know you can't see this. I know you can't. All right. Up in this area. Yeah. Are little tiny pits. Yes. Those are the only known evidence ever discovered of a frog hopping. Stop it. I can actually see them. That is the coolest thing I've seen in a while. I see yeah. them. Yeah, you can see them. Little tiny. They're like the story about this is, <laughs> is actually this is this is not a frog i'm sorry these are toad prints toad. oh yeah oh wait you can really see them right now frogs you can see that right oh yeah oh my and goodness you're gonna go big deal but whoa no oh no people think it's cool they're they're excited <laughs> they're ex i'm excited only evidence ever discovered and the only reason that we know that this is, that these exist is because Dr. Weems, again, my bud, Dr. Weems sent his kids out to catch a frog and a toad because we weren't sure. I thought it was an insect. I thought they were insect tracks. Did but you do he, some experimental things and have yeah, them hop well, on did, wet clay? <laughs> so cool. Dip the toads back feet in ink and oh my God. Jump on uh, paper and compare <laughs> to this. I don't want to just do that for fun. <laughs> that sounds amazing. So if I had to collect something. Can you see That's that? amazing. <laughs> that is so cool. And this is. That just is awesome. Uh, so, I mean, uh, there's other stuff in here, but if I had to pick one thing, I grab my to my toad prints. <laughs> I love it. I can see why. I just want to go back in time and watch this experimental. Uh, we call it an archaeology experimental archaeology when That's you rebuild right. something and then destroy it and see what it looks like. Exactly. Exactly. No. So that's the story. And uh, Dr. Weems sent his son Andrew out to catch something and <laughs> back a toad, and he put it on the paper. Uh, this was back when uh, printer paper came in big rolls. And yes. Okay. And, and it just hopped across and uh, I love it. Toad. So how much, how much, I'm, I'm just curious. I'm a big fan of toads. Um, I actually carry around, I'll show it to you, a mummified toad in my car. Um, I'll explain that another day, but I'm very into toads and I'm wondering how much have they changed since they, the ones that were hopping oh, on that well, earth. Well, the fossil record of toads and frogs, the actual fossil record goes back probably, their ancestors go back about 180 million years. Um, Just a few so, grains of salt. <laughs> a few grains of salt, I know. I'll just figure out how many <laughs> tablespoons that is. Um, the, um, uh, the body fossils of toads have been found, the true toad, true frog, uh, phew, Probably, probably right around the time of these prints, about 110 million years old. Yeah, they've been around a long so time. Oh, cool. Yeah, and 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 they were one of the few animals, along with a bunch of other ones, that made it through the Great Extinction uh, six million years ago. 
the big mystery. How come toads, lizards, right? How come they made it through, right? When the big dinosaurs didn't. Right. Yeah. And it has to do with the fact that these guys have, are go places. They can yeah. do lots of different stuff and they can hide in the mud. Easier to adapt, you know, like, like look at alligators too. I mean, they've just, they've yeah, been able to. A, yeah, when you're a, a three ton triceratops. <laughs> You can't go hide under something, right? No. Go swim and hide. <laughs> escape the meteors. All right, we have another question here from Chase McKenna. Have you ever found a skull of any animal? Um, have I ever found a skull? I found pieces of skull. Um, uh, again, heads, heads, heads. Are, are difficult to, uh, are rare, okay, in the fossil record. I have found jaw bones, I found well, lots of teeth, but pieces of skull, okay? Now the, the large whale at Stratford is, has the skull of a seven foot skull. So you wanna count that? Gigantic, yeah. That's, that's a full skull, okay? Um, but the reason heads don't fossilize okay as easily is because they are joined at the neck and the neck is a weak point a weak part of the skeletal structure so the head gone and uh that's why when you find a lot of uh, a lot of large animals or when you find body fossils of uh, vertebrates many times you don't find the head at all or you find the head later or you find a head and no body you know <laughs> because again you again, comes off and, and another, thing about, <laughs> true, another thing about fossils is that generally you have to have water present, okay? Mm. Water, you have to have, like, you have to have, it has to be submerged. Like, for instance, uh, petrified wood. Mm -hmm. okay? Petrified wood uh, goes through, uh, has to fall in the water, be entombed by muds, and then slowly each cell uh, absorbs the mineral content of the water and over time and pressure becomes petrified. Uh, so that's one thing I didn't mention is that one of the key elements of, of fossilization is the presence of water or, mm -hmm. uh, or uh, waterborne sediments. So cool. <clears throat> Any other questions? Oh, here we go. All right. Do you think they should make a clone of a dino? I do not think they should. Well, you know, I mean, <laughs> let's go back to Jeff Goldblum's comment. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Jurassic Park, you know. I think we've seen how that turned out. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't too good. But um, cloning, uh, you know, should they do it? <clears throat> should they do it? The ethics of doing something like that? Um, I would not do it simply because you are going to introduce something that is not part of the natural uh, environment anymore. And it's, uh, I, I don't know, I, I, I wouldn't do it personally. However, I know that, that research is going on with mastodons now the, in, uh, in, in Russia. They have a number of, uh, and other places, they have a number of <sighs> carcasses that they are actively trying to extract DNA. Wild. Wild, wild. Yeah, I, I vote no on that one too. I and I didn't mention amber either. I have some mm. uh, amber. Amber is so fantastic. I got a bunch of amber too. Amber is 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 hardened tree sap that has entombed animals, and they and it's surprising the amount of uh, stuff that got stuck in amber that they have found. Just got okay. Apparently, my volume is really loud, <laughs> so I'll turn my volume down. Maybe. Sorry about that. I'm a loud person, um, so excuse me. I did not mean to blow anybody's ears off. Also, we were having a hard time early uh, earlier hearing each other. <clears throat> All right. So Chase and McKenna ask, "Have you found a mosquito in amber?" I have. So, I have some insects in amber in my collection. I did not find it. However. Years ago, I'll tell you, you can find amber in uh, 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 east of Route 1 in Prince William County. Uh, now, remember, if you're going hunting for stuff, 
get permission if you're on because all the land is owned by somebody but uh years and years ago uh, my wife and i would uh right down from where the apartment where we lived in dumfries was a swamp uh a, a cretaceous swamp and uh, though we never did find it i'm pretty sure that there are amber and it's small and not as not as big as the baltic or the dominican uh, amber that's out there yeah. Amber is pretty fantastic. Amber's there was a, uh, in California, I'm from, there was a store called the Bone Room and it was a, literally a place you could go buy fossils and oh, yeah. all kinds of weird natural history things. And it was, they had a ton of beautiful Amber in there and I got a bunch of it over the years. Pretty fantastic. All right. Well, I think we are out of questions. We're going to wrap up today's uh, Science Saturday. Great. Thank you so much for everybody uh, for Zooming in today to hear about fossils. And thank you, John, for your, your usual enthusiasm and knowledge. And again, you want to remind them of what to do before yeah, April 1st? Yeah. If you have a fossil at home, take a photograph of it, email it to me, okay, by April 1, and, we'll, and tell me where you found it uh and any details maybe you might even know the county of what state that you found it and would help and it'll be fun we'll sit around look at the pictures talk more about fossils that people are finding and uh who knows what'll come up it'll be it'll be fun awesome all right well thank you all for zooming in and we will see you on april 10th have a great day everybody take it easy